as you probably know, I use Hyperland. And outside of that couple of month period where I had some issues with video capture, I've been doing so since before it was an official package on Arch Linux. Back then, if you wanted to run it, you had to install it from the AUR. Your other option was compile it yourself. There wasn't an official option available then. And back then, that was the case on a bunch of other distros as well. But nowadays, Hyperland is quite popular, and when an application becomes popular, a lot of distros start to package it. So nowadays, you have an official package on NixOS, OpenSUSE, Fedora, even Slackware has official packaging. And then on the BSD side, FreeBSD has an official package. But that doesn't mean that everything does. And some distros just don't care. But a couple of others all are in agreement on why they're not going to package it. But recently, a new distro joined the group. Alpine Linux accepted their fate. Now, don't get me wrong. It is totally understandable if a distro doesn't have a package for a certain application, especially an application like Hyperland, which a couple of years ago, nobody really knew about it. Yeah, it was getting a bit of attention in the window manager space, but it was still this fairly niche thing. It was fairly buggy. It was changing all the time. To be fair, it's still changing all the time, but it was fairly buggy. But over time, it developed this audience and became this really popular thing. And I think this is what happened in the Arch Linux case, because for a while, Hyperland was sitting at the top of the AUR. I think it was there for like a couple of months. The only things more popular are AUR package managers, and those are never going to be in the main repo. If something is at the top of the AUR and it's allowed to be in the main repo, usually after some amount of time, it's going to be. But I guess no one wanted to do so for quite a while. And then someone came along and was like, you know what? I'm going to be that someone. But in the Alpine case, it's not that nobody wanted to take it on. It's that it was outright rejected. This is the original package request. Package request Hyperland WM. Hyperland is a dynamic tiling Wayland compositor based on WL roots that doesn't sacrifice on its looks. 10 months ago, it was in a pretty good state. It's in a lot better of a state now but it was totally usable at this point. And the response is simply, this won't be added because it depends on WL roots. But then it had another packed request, draft testing Hyperland new A port. Hyperland is a highly customizable dynamic tiling whaling compositor that doesn't sacrifice on its looks. This one had another comment from the same user. I assume they're the same user because there's not that many deleted users on this GitLab. Now, this person didn't actually understand the problem with packaging Hyperland, at least the perceived problem of it. Hello, can I reopen this merge request if this A port is not longer using WL Roots Git? I would like to update the existing WL Roots package. Hyperland only compiles with WL Roots Git. To be specific, a specific commit of WL Roots, because WL Roots Master is unstable and has constantly breaking changes. You can't update WL Roots to Git, a random unreleased commit, to get it to work, because then nothing else that uses WL Roots would work. Every release of WL Roots is ABI incompatible with the previous, as well as most arbitrary commits, so not sure what you mean. TLDR, you can't get this working with not WL Roots Git, it's just not how it works, so no. This is a reasonable reason to reject it. However, let's go look at the Void Linux side, because they've also had a long discussion about not packaging Hyperland. Package request, Hyperland. Hyperland is an amateurling way on closer based on WL Roots as it looks. Yes. So, why can't we package it? So, at the time, I was able to build a package, version 0.6.2 beta, for this and currently using it. You will need the following. WL Roots package based on this specific commit. Obviously, nowadays, it's a lot newer, but it will still be a very specific commit, not a stable release. Get to that. Hyperland source, where the subproject references to WL Roots build is removed and replaced as a dependency. Since Void has separate WL Roots package, Hyperland includes WL Roots in their build. 
you can do this by patching. With this said, I think we may have to wait until WL Roots releases a new version before we can include it in the repository. So, this gets us to the meat of the problem with packaging Hyperland, as I said, the perceived problem with doing so. Basically, every sensibly run distro has a WL Roots package. This is going to be used by projects like Sway and River and DWL and all of these other different compositors built on WL Roots. Hyperland will not use that package, and if you try to force it to do so, it will not work because Hyperland uses its own bundled version of WL Roots, its own vendor dependency specifically in the project. So if you want to build Hyperland, you don't just build Hyperland, you're also building WL Roots inside of it. Now, importantly, this is not a stable release of WL Roots. This is a specific commit chosen by Vaxbury that he wants to build the current version of Hyperland on. At some point in time, it has been the absolute latest git commit in the project. He realized fairly quickly that um, building off the latest git commit is a terrible idea because sometimes regressions get implemented and it's just best not to do that. So it's a pinned commit, but it is not a pinned stable commit. The important thing to note is it's basically not what any distro out there is shipping as their WL Roots package. This has also been discussed very heavily over on the Hyperland issue tracker. Fall back to using system WL Roots development files. To make packaging this for distros a whole lot nicer or mergeable in the first place, there should be a fallback to locating system WL Roots instead of forcefully trying to use the bundle WL Roots under subprojects slash WL Roots. So this is where their bundled version is located. I know this currently closely follows WL Roots Git, but are there any plans to later make releases that build against the latest tag release of WL Roots? And Vax replied, most likely not. And as for doing it, this, not possible, which people didn't like at the time, but there is a really good reason for this. W Roots Head has many breaking changes compared to the latest tag release. If I wanted to keep releases that have a tag W Roots version, I could either release every time W Roots makes a tag, like what, two to six months, or keep two Hyperland versions supported. And that is a lot of work. As you can see, it'd be a pain in the ass. The most reasonable version if I was forced at gunpoint to support tag W roots would be to make a script or pragmas uh, that control code based on the W roots version. Even then, some features might break on W roots 016 dev and not 015 and vice versa. Pure pain. So basically, you would need to compile out features depending on what build of W roots you're building against, which just sounds like a nightmare waiting to happen. Wayland and WL Roots are quickly moving forward in development, very quickly, and we want to allow users to use the latest Wayland features, which I think is fairly reasonable. The problem is a lot of distros simply don't like the idea of bundled dependencies. If you have a dependency, it should be a system package like every other application does. The problem is this way of doing software is a mostly functional hack, but there's a reason why a lot of developers are a big fan of things like flat packs, of snaps, of app images, because you don't have to hack your application together to make it work with system dependencies. You can just use the dependencies that you need and just be done with it. My favorite example of this being OBS on Arch Linux, where half the functionality is broken because the Arch team doesn't want to package a specific version of CEF Minimal that is different from the version they are using for just general packages. OBS needs that version, and without it, you just can't use the features. And in Hyperland's case, Hyperland needs this version of WL Roots. It is built against this version, so if you don't offer it, you just can't use it. Speaking of Arch Linux, Ellie Schwartz, Arch Linux bug wrangler and trusted maintainer. They do not like 
bundle dependencies. Most, not all Linux distributions disagree with this philosophy and as a general rule of thumb, have policies that forbid one package such as Hypeland to arbitrarily rely on the absolute latest Git development features of a dependency such as WROOTS. They will stick to this philosophy regardless of the build system you use, regardless of whether you copying the entire WROOTS tree into this repo, regardless of whether you build WROOTS as a static link, and regardless of whether you use a separately named .so. What they actually want is to stick to their policy that software should commit to supporting a stable version of the dependency and then use the existing system version. Unfortunately, that means that if projects don't agree to be compatible with what the distro distro wants, the distro will simply tell users that the distro will never package Hyperland, which means that users will need to figure everything out for themselves. Typically this means users will need to compile it themselves, e.g. the Arch Linux AUR or manually git cloning. Now, as I said earlier, Arch now has an official package. It's also funny they mentioned Fedora, because Fedora also has an official package. So it's Really funny to see that if a package just gets popular enough and there is enough users who want it, your policy doesn't actually matter. It seems like for a lot of distros, their policies about bundle dependencies are more of a guideline than a rule. But my favorite part is from the follow-up comment. By the way, distros are fairly practiced at not backing down. They have tens of thousands of packages and are pretty likely to say, just use one of the other 50 WMs we package. Well, they might be fairly practiced at it, but I don't think that practice has gone to good use. There is nothing you can say that will make them say, oh yeah, you're right, this is a compatible approach. Turns out there is! Just be really, really, really popular. And then... The rules don't matter. But this is what really happens. They will either refuse to package Hyperland because it violates our policy, or... In all these cases that did package it, they will say, this violates our policy, but we've decided the policy no longer matters because this one package called Hyperland is more important than our policy which means they're not very good at not backing down because that would be backing down. <laughs> this is a great comment. And Vaxry's whole reply to this is, okay, and if the distro doesn't want to package Hyperland, I'm not going to force them to do so. It's their decision. I have a requirement. If a distro is unwilling to fulfill it, cool. And if you share the distro's mindset of, I want to allow newer stuff because no, then you just don't want to use Hyperland and that's really it. There are releases that are pre-compiled for a reason. They provide a special SO that will not conflict with any other SO. You also have the Messon option, which probably in the future, I'll add to the releases as well for people who need a static link. If you or your distro have a problem with that, they can like, not package Hyperland. I won't cry about it and I never have been. Ultimately, he marked this as completed and then changed his mind and closed it as not planned. Now, this has been reported a bunch of other times as well because people somehow cannot use a search engine and realize the things already been reported. One of these cases was over on the Debian side. Build failure on Debian. This user failed to build Hyperland. And would you be surprised for the reason they failed to build it? You probably forgot to git clone dash dash recursive and are now falling back to system w roots. No guarantees shall be made further. Ah, my bad. Is there a way to build the source without cloning the w roots package? No. Hmm. I'd like to package Hyperland for Debian slash Ubuntu eventually. Debian doesn't allow included sources of other programs though. That's kind of my issue here. The libwroots dev package is already in Debian. Build mess on, link statically, and distribute that. The problem is I'd have to remove the source slash wroots and build without it, which doesn't work as far as I know. And once again, we see Ellie in here. And they actually do give a fairly good reply. Debian policy cannot be fulfilled. Debian demands that dependencies use system versions, not vendoring. Hyperland demands 
that the latest development commit of WR root complete with the API breaking changes is used in writing new hyperland code targeting those APIs. Adding an option to comply with the Debian policy would only help if the project development velocity is simultaneously changed to no longer make use of in-development APIs. Vaxbreed does not wish to do this, so I'm not sure there's much else to discuss. Pretty much, yeah. Even if there was the option to build against system versions, if Vaxbury was always just using these new APIs that weren't in the system version, you're just going to have a version of Hyperland that doesn't work. Now, of the distros which I feel like won't back down about their policy, Debian, I feel like, is one of the very few that's probably in that camp. Getting anything changed on Debian requires a vote and takes a lot of time, and someone actually did request a Hyperland package on Debian when their page eventually loads. I'll cut back. RFP, request a package, Hyperland. Dynamic tag, mailing for the base and WR roots. So... High plan is an average time on mailing plus based on your roots. It doesn't sacrifice it looks. We've read this like five times now. So packaging wise, it'll be complicated. Hyperland embeds multiple sub-projects. Hyperland protocols would need to be a separate source package. This is easily doable from a quick glance. A fork of UDIS86 is also embedded. Coincidentally, I prepared some initial UDIS86 packaging for PPSSPP, so this won't be that much of an issue. The third embedded project is w roots which will be the biggest problem in my opinion as hyperland statically links onto the latest w roots head at the time it did nowadays it is a specific commit which will be hard to de-vendor if not impossible just imagine a hyperland package officially on debian and then towards the end of a debian life cycle two-year-old bug reports being made to hyperland from users who don't realize just how out of date their system is. Ubuntu would be bad enough, but man, Debian, <laughs> Debian bug reports on Hyperland would be rough to see. But most distros aren't Debian, and it seems like with enough popularity and enough time, you can eventually convince them to package your project. Testing Hyperland new A port. This was done two weeks ago. I'm not reading it again, done enough times. Previous packaging attempts of Hyperland have been rejected because it uses wroots git. Hyperland, for almost a year and a half, used a tagged commit of wroots and, for about half a year, includes a patch to bump the SO version of wroots so as to not conflict with future wroots releases. As packaged below, Hyperland will not conflict with Sway, wroots, or wroots dev, but Hyperland dev will conflict with wroots dev. This is the same as how wroots 016 dev conflicts with wroots dev. All that to say, I think there should be no technical problem with the package using its bundled wroots, but I'm happy to work through anything if it comes up. Even though it's a little bit rough to get these packages to actually get made, I am just happy that more people are able to mess around with Hyperland. And even if you don't like Hyperland and you go back to whatever other thing you were using, it's just nice to have it there for the users who actually want to have it. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like Hyperland? Do you run Hyperland? And what distro are you running it on? I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of them, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribes and Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and Hyperland will eventually be more popular than Gnome.